Hello everyone, my name is Marco and this is a stream of about an hour and 20 minutes that I turned into this time lapse. What I'm doing here is I'm doing a catapult and a javelin for a game that I'm working on right now, Keep the Keep. Now this is a, a wheel of the catapult sort of vehicle and I'm chamfering these vertices so that I can create this cuts on the wood. And all of these details are very large because the, the catapult is going to be far from the camera but also the style of the game allows me to go in and do these sort of uh, cartoony exaggerated shapes. I'm also separating the edges that I've chamfered uh, so that I get that edge to look really, really strong. I took the side polygon and turned that into a square just to keep everything in the same object and I create the tip of an axle and a locking pin to hold the wheel in place. Now this green uh, box here is going to be the main structure. There's going to be two of those and this is the, the second one. And I decided that the wheels and axle should be a main, a main object so that I can rotate them uh, at the same time. So I do that, I connect the two wheels and here I'm creating the round uh, cylindrical shape for the, the axle to, to spin in a, in a bearing. The bearing is just going to be a metal, uh, sort of a metal hoop that goes under the, the structure. I'm doing it with a spline and I give it thickness using the show, uh, render and viewport. And just turning that into an editable poly, I can then edit the polygons and create more detail than it has. I'm also duplicating this polygon here to create a nail, which would be what I would attach this to the structure of the, of the cart. Let's call it a cart uh, that holds a catapult. Uh, I also start creating some materials to apply to the object so that I can kind of get a look of what it will uh, look like in the end. I use the same uh, hooks that I, or uh, hoops that I use for the bearings and use that for the central um, axle of the catapult. And I use one of the bearings, but I change it a little bit to just be the connection. So it's to be the, the attachment, sort of the, the bolting of the uh, main, um, sort of main bar of the, the catapult, the arm of the catapult, that's it. Um, I'm playing around here with the smoothing groups just so that I can get a, a, a correct shading. I duplicate that box, uh, the axle, and I edit it. I probably edit it too much, to, almost to the point that I didn't need to, to use the same box here, but the point is I keep the same material, I keep the same shading, and also the same thickness, and that's going to help me. Uh, also, I do that for other objects in the scene, just because it helps me, it helps me keep everything within, within shape. I use those polygons there to make the banner of the sort of enemy house. This is, a, uh, this is an attacking vehicle. It's not going to be controlled by the player. And the color is probably going to be around this sort of orange or maybe a, 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 a bad red, not a, one of those positive reds, maybe something evil looking. I still have to figure out chromatically what that is. Uh, this is a spline that's going to be used to create the basket that holds whatever projectile this catapult is going to be shooting. And to sort of clean up the mesh, what I do is I create some connections here at the center. And it takes me a little bit to figure it out because I'm, I'm starting to uh, sort of see that the mesh is going to respond differently. So I basically create a connection in the center and then I chamfer that connection so that it goes to the point where it would intersect the other elements of, the, uh, of this basket. So when they all meet there at the center, I start deleting those inner faces. I weld those vertices and cap both tops and bottoms so that I create a, a clear end. Here I'm connecting or bridging these edges on the sides to create a, sort of a, a ring around to hold the objects. So that's whatever is going to be in there. And now I just adjust that to the place where it's going to be sitting, which is at the top of that bar. I think I move it up a little bit, yeah, because I think it's a little too short. So everything goes up. The, the basket's also going to go up. And I also have to sort of figure out a, a system for this to work. So this system is basically going to be a couple of hooks and springs. But before that, I have to find places where I can connect these hooks. Um, I didn't really go too complex with the shape of the catapult because I didn't want people to sort of guess what this is. Um, and so there's not really uh, an exploration of, of different complex shapes. It's just me going, this is clearly a catapult. Let's not, let's not uh, be excessively creative. I also make these cross beams to hold the structure in and I put those lock pins on the sides again to just to make it more interesting. And I'm basically duplicating some of this mesh uh, uh, around just for detail, not for anything else. I put those uh, pointy tips on the, uh, on the wheels and on the front of the, of the main structure beams. Again, just to give it a more menacing look, but at the same time to give it more detail. Uh, just that it's more interesting to look at from a distance. 
Now, on the tip of the uh, catapult arm, uh, I make a rounded shape here that's going to act as a sort of a dampening surface, almost like a pillow at the tip there, just to, to help it bounce up against that cross beam at the bottom there. I think it, it's actually the, um, it's not a cross beam, it's actually the, the wheels. And the thing is, I'm trying to make a system that kind of looks uh, correct or it kind of makes sense. And, uh, and I'm too, too worried about it. Uh, and probably I shouldn't, I should just put some sort of magic rope here and there. But yeah, I just wanted to be able to use the hose, which is something that most people don't, don't use. The hose in 3D Studio Max is an object that allows you to have two, um, two anchor points. And those anchor points are basically uh, where you want the, the uh, tip and end of your hose to be. And if those anchor points move, your hose adapts to that. So here I take the hose and I attach it to those two points. So you can see it um, stretched across those two uh, dummy objects, those green boxes. Now, if I move the catapult, you can see that the, uh, the rope responds by stretching and shrinking correctly. And the same with that other hose. So that's basically my mechanism, my, uh, my elastic mechanism, which I'll, I'll admit looks very fragile. Uh, but at least it gives, us, it, gives it a justification. I mean, there's going to be golems and, and wizards in this game. It's not going to be... If, if you're going to be driven out of the experience by a couple of ropes that look a little thin, um, then you're probably the wrong, looking in the wrong spot. So again, duplicating all these de details just to have a more believable structure. My, my goal, because, and again, my, my, uh, my uh, formation, my, what, I, what I got a degree on, uh, on was actually product design. So I kind of like to see things uh, that makes sense visually and structurally. Uh, even though there's probably simpler ways to make a catapult, I wanted to, this one to be like a, 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 a machine crafted with the least amount of technology possible. So you cut down a couple of trees, you hew a few, a few logs into these square logs, and then you put stuff together the way you want. So that's why all the pieces kind of look similar. Also, it simplifies me having to do a lot of complex pieces. Now, what I did there is I, sh I just took the cart for the catapult and I'm gonna turn it into the javelin. And the javelin is going to be basically a big crossbow uh, with a ramp for the spear to be launched through or the javelin to be launched through. And I wanted this to look like it was made in the same workshop using it the least amount of different objects possible. So. You have a base that you can reuse, so reuse that, and we're not going to sort of invent a completely different machine because the shape of the javelin itself is enough for the player to know that they're dealing with a different kind of um, uh, enemy, so to speak, a different kind of challenge. And I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do here with the structure, the shape of the javelin. This is half of the javelin bow. And I extrude that with a segment so that I can go in with a scale and start shaping everything up. I start by connecting all the, the edges at the top to create a, create a rounded effect. And then here I'm adding extra supports because I need to move those uh, anchor points of the javelin. I need to move them inwards so that it'll, um, it'll make more sense, almost like we're uh, creating a handle. On that edge there, I created that uh, cut so that I could put in this ramp for the javelin. And this ramp is gonna be locked in with, again with a lock pin Again, not for any particular reason, except for trying to make it believable. Uh, once the lock pin is in place, all I need now is a ramp for the, uh, for the bolt to go through, for the javelin to go through. And I do that by duplicating a few of the polygons at the top of that ramp that I created and kind of moving them, um, moving them and, and shaping them into some sort of uh, iron sights on whatever gun you would see. So I extrude that up. Eventually I divide the two polygons and extrude them individually so that I can uh, then sort of uh, push them apart at the center there with, uh, with selecting the faces and moving. And that way I can create that sort of uh, gap that the bolt would shoot through into the target. So that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you learned something. And um, I'll see you guys again on another video. Take care.